Hello everyone, my name is Pete and this, this is Siphon Tips. In today's episode, I want to share my first impressions about Xcode 16 and also a powerful feature called Code Completion powered by AI, and I mean Apple intelligence, the way Apple is calling their own AI, or artificial intelligence, sorry, this will be confusing. Anyway, uh, yeah, I will share my first impression about it and uh, before starting, let me just say that I'm using right now the beta one of the new macOS Sequoia. And you will notice that right now at Not at Home, uh, there is a different background than my regular one. But look, uh, look like here we have an option, a camera option. And I can now, you know, change my background. And look, <laughs> I'm right now in my bookshelf again. Uh, but notice how it's really precise in the way of it is rendering uh, this uh, screen. Again, I'm not using a green screen, but this is really powerful. I don't know you, I feel like, you know, we are in the future. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just start by opening uh, Xcode again. I'm using uh, Xcode beta, Xcode 16.0 beta 1. And I will create a new project, okay? Um, by the way, for this demo, oops, let me bring my, there you go. Uh, for this particular demo, uh, you will, if you want to use code completion, you will require, uh, oh, let me move this, there you go. Yeah, maybe you don't need to see my face, but either way. Um, for this particular demo, you will require uh, macOS Sequoia if you want to use the uh, code completion features and of course Xcode 16, okay? And you also need uh, a MacBook with M chips and one and above and at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. In my particular configuration, I'm using an M1 Max with uh, 32 gigabytes, so I'm good to go. Let me uh, start a new project. Let's call it demo uh, iOS 18 um, Xcode 16, whatever, right? Uh, notice here, well, this is my name, my ID. Uh, of course, I want to use it to I. Who cares about StoryWars now? Language, Swift, of course. Notice that we have uh, two different ways now for testing. We have the uh, traditional exit test. But now we have a new one, Swift testing. We will talk a little bit more in a coming video. For now, I won't, I won't select anything. And in storage, of course, we have code data and we have Swift, Swift, Swift data, sorry. Um, yeah, again, I need to double check that in another video. But for now, let's keep it simple. There you go. Okay. Now I'm here, let me bring this, my face right here. And I'll make this a little bit smaller, but either way, let me, okay, there we go. So now um, we have, what do we have here? We have Xcode, as always, right? And let's just start creating a new file. By the way, you will notice that we have a few features here, like this new empty file uh, option. We can just click it and you will generate a Swift file right off the bat. Okay, uh, let's call it demo because I'm really creative right now. And let's create a class, right? Class demo, we don't care. Um, let's start with something really simple. Let's just start creating a um, vari uh, variable, okay? Uh, bar h equal to 20, okay? That's it, that's always. Now, I noticed in the presentation, oh, look at that, it is auto-completing. Say hello. <laughs> okay, for some reason, um, Xcode is how to complete in, say hello, uh, because maybe uh, identifies that I'm recording a demo. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but anyway, uh, you can do multiple things. For example, you can, Xcode can, can infer what you want to try to, to do. For example, if you want to create a function to multiply this little guy H by, uh, let's say, four, Let's create, let's add a comment, multiply by four. Well, 
h, right? So now I will try to create a function. Function, uh, look, automatically is inferring. Okay, I want to multiply h by four. So then I go, I just press tab. There we go. <laughs> it's that simple, right? It looks like magic. But let's do something else. Let's like multiply by four um, and divide by 10, let's say, right? Okay, let's see what it will do. Mm, okay, multiply, multiply, okay. <laughs> Magic, right? So this is great, um, maybe for some particular situations where uh, you maybe don't know uh, how to do the code and you want to say, okay, this code particularly will do this thing, right? Then you can uh, internally or directly using a comment to generate that code, uh, well, automatically from Xcode, okay? That's cool. Of course, you can remove this later because, I mean, it's obvious that this is, that what is uh, this uh, function doing? But let's do something else. For example, let's create something like a, a product, okay? Um, we have to create a, a, a new struct, okay? Let's create struct, product, okay, product. There you go. Oh, it's also suggesting a user, although I don't care right now. <laughs> I just care about the product. And look how we got name and price, which is great. That means a good start, okay? Once we have done that, let's create a, a new variable, at least a product, right? Products. Okay. Well, as you notice, it is not perfect. That's product. Yep, it's not working. For some reason, it's not working. Why is it not working? Okay, let's try again. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know if it's the beta or it's Xcode being Xcode, as always, products. Okay, equal to. Okay, let's do something. Let's try to compile this. There we go. And I, I, I want to show everything, right? So uh, this is like a real demo. This is not, I'm just trying to fake something. Uh, yeah, you will see the experience right away. Well, for some reason, it's not, it's not working. Uh, let's do something about it, like uh, yeah, product. Maybe let's try to see if I yeah, got something. Okay, well, anyway. Okay, so now um, let's try then to fetch some products from an API, okay? We don't have that API, we don't care right now. It's just, just for the purpose of the demo, uh, I want to display something like a, a fetching operator from a web service. Um, then I have to create, in, in, instead of now creating, uh, well, you know, let, let, let's try to create it from, from a comment. Uh, let's say something like fetch products from a web API and see what happens. Honk, fetch. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Okay, as you notice, it is not perfect. If for some reason this piece of code doesn't make any sense, okay? Mm, maybe over time this will in, you know, be improved uh, by all the inputs that we are providing to this um, new feature. But let's try something else. Let's try to implement this from scratch, okay? Uh, fetch, oh, something, I, I got something. Let, let's try to implement first uh, a function to add, in, add in a new product. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Okay, it's a little bit redundant, but okay, I I got it. Now, let's do something like um, fetching product. Fetch product, okay, right? Nothing happened for some reason. Okay, let's implement this from scratch. Let's do something like uh, uh, using URL session. Oh, <laughs> look at that, <laughs> automatically is inferring that. I don't know if he's spying me or so, but I got it, all right? Wait a second. Not exactly what I was looking for because 
is generating an old version. So, okay, let's do something else. Sure, and then uh, use, um, what is the name of this thing? Um, give me one second, because I don't remember, I don't remember uh, URL session, share dot uh, data. No, that's some, that was some, something for uh, task publisher, data task. From URL, there we go, this one. I was looking for this one, okay? By the way, this is a sync, and this will throw an error, okay? It throws, yeah. Uh, okay, let's try that again. Share data. Hmm, okay. Uh, is it right? No, it's pretty, pretty not right. Uh, but unless, for some reason, is uh, already completing uh, some JSON decoder, okay? Uh, hmm, this is weird. Why it is auto-completing this from URL, right? Oh, come on, dude. From, there we go. It is not auto-completing URL string. Okay, whatever. Can you help me? No. It is not helping at all. Okay, let's comment this for now. Let's try to do this again. Data from mm -mm. Okay. Notice that this is is requiring some improvement. Data. No, but I don't want the version man. I want this one. Can I? Oh, wait a second. I got something. Data. What about this? There you go. Well, oh, come on, dude. Data. Okay, let me try one more time. There you go. No. Okay. Let me do it again. One more try. That data. Huh. Okay, I don't care. I don't care Slack right now. Data. Oh. Data. Okay. Okay. This is what we're supposed to get. Well, the only thing is that instead of for should be from. Okay. Uh, oh, there you go. I need to import foundation. Thank you. Um, oh, yeah. I have to use, a, you know, try and wait. Of course. Maybe that was the issue. There you go. As you notice, yeah, I, I spend more time just that uh, the AI figuring out things for me rather than me just, you know, googling things. It's, it's what it is, I guess, uh, the way of um, <laughs> sometimes we don't want to, we cannot expect that the AI will do things for me. Uh, but yeah, over time, hopefully this will be improved. Uh, now, let's do that, uh, let's continue with this work. And now let's use, uh, the, you know, decode the products. There you go, okay, this is good. Now the problem is that we don't have, um, the, uh, we need that the pro product conforms the codable, okay? We have struck here. So let's use an extension to products. Okay, it's not product. Okay. Oh, okay, it's completing something, okay. Uh, let's use then the codable, okay. Now let's see what happened. Okay, yeah, I'm just tapping, and it's automatically encoding this. Nice. What about this? Nothing happens. Okay, let's do this hack. 
I will uh, backspace and then tap. No, it's not working at all. Okay. Oh, okay. Looks like now it's auto completing things. Nice. What about price, man? Can you give me that? There you go. There you go. Okay, okay. We got everything. Nice. Now, uh, oh yeah, and we have to return this, right? Um, new list of products. Oops. For some reason, my Mac is actually turning the fans on. And for some reason, I'm getting a thread sleep. <laughs> Why not, right? We are trying to generate some async tools. Oh, okay, well, he got the products. Nice. But I don't know. Looks like this is good. But at some point, I think it's like 50-50. Um, and in the coming episodes, I will try to uh, take a look to this code completion uh, with the coming betas. And well, let's see if this is improving again. But as you notice, well, at least I think for people that is just starting with uh, Swift, this could be a really powerful tool um, instead of Googling. Uh, but again, as many things in Xcode, it depends on the, on the compiler to react quickly. And as you have seen right now, for me is meh, okay. Maybe it was me. Maybe I'm the, uh, I'm the issue, the human, right? <laughs> Maybe the computer was right all the time and me messing things up. But uh, you, you tell me, what do you think? Uh, it's, I just wanted to share uh, a little bit of what I got from this um, new uh, tool. I think overall it's powerful again, but uh, we need to really be really careful because it won't replace you and it won't fix all your problems in one shot, okay? You need to do, you need to know what you're doing, okay? One more thing before ending this episode is that, um, as you notice in the, in the, let me bring this here. Um, right now, uh, Swift Assist, that was one of the cool features that they announced, it is not available in the, uh, in this beta one, okay? If you're watching this video later, uh, after July, August or so, probably this will be available, but not today, okay? And that's about me. Oh, sorry, that's about me uh, sharing my first impressions. Uh, I think it's uh, amazing to see. I think it's a good progress for uh, Xcode, but again, still uh, with a lot of room for improvement. But, that, but tell me, what do you think about this feature? I would like to read your comments down below and expect more from me about .dot .dc. That's it for now. Thank you so much and have a great day.